thank you everyone for joining in. Uh, welcome to Opal RT's webinar on microwave controller testing with hardware in the loop. We have uh, three specialists on this subject today with us. Uh, myself, uh, Sayed Kasim Ali. I am the TND DR team leader in the access division at Opal RT. And I'll talk about the microwave control systems uh, and HIL test beds with the microwave control systems, their architectures, and different setups that could be uh, set up for testing. Um, our special guest, Brian Miller, the, the, the microgrid strategic team leader at Re National Renewable Energy Lab and REL, who will present the microgrid research capabilities, including multiple hardware in the loop test beds. And he'll also show an overview of Barigo Springs controller hardware in the loop and power hardware in the loop test setup and results. We also have the, the participation of Scott Manson, uh, who is the Engineering Services Technologies Director at Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories, SEL. During this webinar, Scott will present the latest developments with SEL's microgrid controls and uh, that continue to successfully expand new microgrid research capabilities. Uh, the, this is the webinar uh, outline. We'll each have our part of the presentations, and in the end, we have a question and answer period. Uh, you can start sending your questions, and we'll try our best to answer most of them uh, in this webinar. Uh, if we are not able to answer them, uh, we'll definitely answer them by email after the webinar. So I'll start my presentation with uh, the typical V diagram, uh, the V cycle diagram of uh, product development, which I have adopted for, uh, for microgrid development. So uh, typically we start with uh, gathering requirements for microgrids that would be uh, obtained from the planning phase, which includes cost benefit analysis, uh, definition of performance metrics, and uh, of course, technical standards such as 20, IEEE 2030.8.7 uh, um, and the IEC standards that talk about microgrid controllers. The second step you go, move on to is concept and system modeling. Uh, the third step is design studies, which will include uh, modeling control, building virtual models for control and protection, doing grid impact studies, doing energy management studies, DER integration studies, grid code, code compliance studies, and uh, of course, KPI evaluations uh, or performance metric evaluations based on the metrics that you defined in the first uh, phase. Uh, then, of course, uh, you move on into real-time implementation, uh, which would involve uh, decoupling the model that you did for that was optimized for offline simulation. You would decouple the model so that uh, you make sure it runs real-time. Uh, if needed, you, you'll have to decouple it into multiple cores, into multiple time steps. That in includes multi-rate modeling and hybrid modeling. It may also be multi-domain modeling for uh, which entails hybrid modeling. Uh, the next step would be unit uh, hardware in the loop testing. Uh, you would test each and every uh, asset in the microgrid uh, individually as if it was not uh, connected to the whole network. The next step is integrated HIL testing where you would test the whole um, microgrid or, or each and every DER as part of the, of the whole microgrid. Um, and of course, the final the final step is uh, integrated verification validation, where you'll test all the test scenarios with the microgrid controller, uh, and finally validate all the KPIs that you uh, that you that show you the performance of your whole system uh, based on the performance metrics that you designed uh, that you decided in the in the requirements. Um, this, the second and the third step could be achieved uh, using offline simulations, uh, although you can get benefit of speeding up uh, the studies, uh, especially the design studies, if you do use real time or, uh, or accelerated simulation in this step. Uh, next, I'll show you two, uh, two test beds, uh, possible test beds. Uh, one is controller hardware in the loop, where we are able to uh, test different levels of control functionality of a microgrid control system. So the microgrid itself would be uh, modeled and simulated on the cores, and uh, you'll have the first level of control, which includes control and uh, local local control and protection devices. Uh, you could either simulate those local control and protection devices or have uh, an actual uh, hardware of control and protection device connected to the real-time simulator. Um, then you can also test level two functions, which include uh, the transition handling handling of a microgrid controller, uh, of a microgrid 
by a microgrid controller and uh, the energy dispatch function. Uh, again, you could have a simulated microgrid controller or an actual microgrid controller that connects to the real-time simulator and then uh, controls each individual asset and DER on the microgrid. Uh, it's also possible to test level three functions, although you won't really simulate those level three functions on a real-time simulator, but you can uh, use communication interfaces provided by a real-time simulator to connect to either an aggregating agent, a market, and price forecasting agent or um, uh, the weather forecast provider uh, to allow optimization of your uh, of your of the operation of your microgrid. Um, another type of te uh, typical test bed would be a power hardware in the loop test bed, where you uh, you can ex actually exchange uh, power. Uh, from the device under test and the simulated system. The way you interface your simulated system to the actual uh, system is using either a switching uh, amplifier or a linear power amplifier. Um, okay, so the typical studies that you would do based on uh, these uh, hardware in the loop test beds would be would involve either uh, fast transient HIL control and protection HIL or uh, large system dynamics, uh, slow HIL uh, studies. So, so uh, the first one, uh, fast transient HIL, is mostly you're interested in, in studying switching harmonics, uh, control interaction, system power quality uh, of, of each individual DER. Um, over here, the challenge is uh, really simulating, fa uh, accurately simulating power electronics, which may go uh, to switching frequencies up to five kilohertz or maybe higher than that. And to simulate those uh, systems, you need uh, time steps that are in order of 100 of nanoseconds to about 50 microseconds. Uh, we've got some tools that allow you to go to uh, uh, hundreds of nanoseconds. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, EFP GSM. Uh, and then uh, typical EMT type simulations are, are done using uh, eMegasim RT Lab um, and HyperSim uh, from Opal RT. Uh, you could also have uh, hybrid simulations where you decouple the system or the power electronics in EFP GSM and run the whole uh, whole system in uh, eMegasim or HyperSim. Uh, the next type of studies that you, are, you, you will be interested in is uh, protection and control studies. The typical time step that you need for these kinds of studies is ranges from 10 microsecond to 100 microsecond. Uh, you can uh, typically uh, study eye landing protection, uh, stability of the microgrid, uh, cascaded events, uh, protection coordination, and different uh, applications over here. Uh, then uh, you may be interested in large systems and slow dynamics hardware in the loop uh, testing where uh, you test the microgrid or a microgrid or clusters of microgrids in in a large power system um, and study if uh, they help or if they are able to provide grid services using an, uh, an aggregator for instance um, it's also possible to uh, run uh, to, to simulate large distribution networks with uh, three-phase un unbalanced networks uh, at uh, when you're when you're trying to study slow dynamics, uh, our tools uh, uh, eMegasim and HyperSim again provide you EMT type uh, simulation uh, uh, platform, but we also have eFaser Sim where you can do phaser domain simulation, be it balanced or unbalanced. And it really helps you run uh, the systems real time if uh, if you are interested in studying large uh, distribution systems. Um, we also have uh, in HyperSim the HyperSim suite. Uh, it also offers you test automation, uh, where you can get your parameters uh, and test scenarios from the standards that define testing of microgrid control and control systems. Uh, you can provide them in an Excel file. Test View automatically reads them from an Excel file and then runs the simulation in HyperSim. Uh, uses Scope View to to record and generate uh, waveforms. Uh, sorry, record waveforms from the running simulation. Does post processing, and you you can generate reports in uh, Excel. Uh, 
it may be pass fail reports it may be uh, different performance indicators uh, that you may be interested in and have an automatic uh, report generation using these tools uh, this slide shows uh, the microid uh, uh, the customers that we have that are involved in uh, microid uh, controller or microid operation testing uh, or research we have a presence uh, all over the globe so i'll show you a demo that we have uh, of a microgrid uh, it allows you to interact with the microgrid that's running on a real time simulator in real time this is a, a good panel that shows you how how systems react to different impedances that you provide the microgrid but you could also automate this uh, and and this gives shows a good example of how testing can be done so for example this microgrid is um, is part of a larger 600 node distribution network it has a battery energy storage system a wind turbine a pv array and a few different kinds of loads uh, it's all controlled by a microgrid controller that implements two main functions of uh, of the uh, of the microgrid controller uh, it's not a complete controller yet we're just demonstrating two functions one is uh, planned eye landing and the other one is energy or power dispatch uh, ensuring a reference power that uh, either injected or uh, pulled absorbed from the from the main grid so right now we are at minus six kilowatts absorbing uh, injecting power we can increase this reference to maybe four kilowatts and uh, we can see the battery energy storage system dispatch changed to respond to this. We can also provide different um, uh, different uh, disturbances like load changes and see how the system reacts. We also provide, uh, we can also reduce the wind speed so the wind power goes down. We can slow down, the, we can uh, reduce the irradiation and see how the power uh, reduces. So uh, if we go, if we want to do planned eye landing, we request eye landing event, and we see the power over here reduces down to zero. That's what the controller does, and then the controller opens the breaker, and now we are running in eye landed mode. Um, we can also uh, run different kinds of studies. For example, we can have uh, a definite load profile and a radiation profile and a wind profile which we can see over here and uh, we'll see once we activate that it starts reading the irradiation the load and the wind speed uh, data from recorded from a recorded previous day uh, which was taken from California ISO and then we can we can see how the system performs especially the the battery energy storage system dispatch uh, I'll shut down the profiles here. We can also perform false studies, for example. Uh, we can sh we can have a three phase to ground fault uh, on one of, the so right now we are seeing the three phase to ground fault on one of the nodes in the distribution network, and we can see how the battery storage system responds to that fault. So the fault results in a voltage sag on the microgrid, and uh, therefore the current increases to maintain power output power from the battery energy storage system so another thing that we have over here is that we are simulating the power electronics of the battery energy storage system on an fpga that runs at one microsecond time step while the whole network runs at a 50 microsecond time step uh, with that we can actually see the ripples on the current of a battery energy storage system Whereas the rest of the uh, DERs will show you uh, will show you nice clean waveforms because they are uh, average model converters used uh, to implement them. But for the battery system, we can see the current has a lot of ripples on them. 